Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the first trade to actually happen on trade deadline week involving the Colorado Avalanche and the Anaheim Ducks. Now this is a pretty interesting one because for the Avs they get a top four defenseman in Josh Manson, but for the Ducks they get a pretty solid return as well. So when it comes to this trade, who do I think wins this deal, Colorado or Anaheim, and what are the trade details on this deal? Watch till the end for all of the details and all my opinions and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new to the sports. Net YouTube channel, and without further ado, let's break down this Ducks and Avs trade. Now, personally, I think this trade could honestly be a great one for both teams involved, but especially for the Avalanche, although it's a simple addition, I think Josh Manson could be really a big help for them on that top four. But going back to what the trade details are on this deal, the Colorado Avalanche will acquire Josh Manson, and according to our very own Elliot Freeman, it'll be 50% retained on that deal. In exchange, the Anaheim Ducks will get a second round pick in 2023 and prospect Drew Hellison, which we'll talk about in a second. But those are the trade details here honestly looking at both sides I feel like there's a lot of merit to both teams here with the Avalanche they obviously get the rental defenseman to add some more physicality and defense onto that decor especially come playoff time that's going to be helpful and for the Ducks although they're in a playoff race they've been a team that's pretty openly said that they're still willing to move pieces we still have yet to see a Ricard Raquel or a Hampus Lindholm deal but Josh Manson was likely going to be one of the first dominoes to fall and he's the first player traded on trade deadline week and especially for the Ducks though to get a defensive prospect back in a second round pick, it's not the best in the world, but at the same time for a rental D-man that they probably weren't going to be able to sign long term anyway, I think it's a solid return for them too. Now Josh Manson's an interesting one. At age 30, I feel like he is past his prime at this point, but still can provide a lot of value for this Avs team in terms of skating solidly and being a great physical and defensive presence. I feel like on Colorado, he has the potential to be a huge addition to their decor, especially when we get into the depths of the playoffs. At the same time though, I feel like he's not the player he once was. If we look back in 2018, 19, 20, those were the years in his mid-20s where I thought Josh Manson was absolutely in his prime. At the same time still, though, for this Avalanche team that I thought needed some more physicality, especially on the back end, Josh Manson is exactly the type of player that you'd want, and if he's able to keep up with the rest of the team, then it's, in my opinion, a perfect addition for Colorado. Now, to show you guys a little bit of what I'm talking about, going back to 2018 with Josh Manson, in that season, he played 80 games, getting seven Seven goals, 30 assists for 37 points. And again, he's more of a defensive two-way defenseman. He wasn't an offensive defenseman then, but it was showing how good his overall game was. And although that's definitely taken a step back, I still think you could see some of that in Colorado, especially when we get into the playoffs. But especially when it comes to Josh Manson, to get a guy like that, I think for Colorado is huge. And again, for what the Ducks are getting as well, I think it's a pretty solid trade for both teams. Now, I think it's especially interesting because the Ducks get a 2023 second rounder instead of a 2022 second and if you're wondering why, it's not just a coincidence. The 2023 draft is looking absolutely amazing, not just at the top of the lineup with Bedard and Mitch Cobb, but also in terms of the depth, there's going to be a lot of options in the second round, at least a year ahead of time. And for the Ducks, I think they're definitely trying to maximize their return on that draft. But you also get defensive prospect Drew Hellison, who at age 20 is looking like a pretty solid piece for the future. He's a guy that I was kind of back and forth on in his draft, but the two things I look for the most in his game are the skating and the great puck possession abilities. He's a guy that if he has the puck and is able to use it correctly, he's a guy that can be almost unstoppable because of his skating and his consistency there, but his puck protection, his amazing ability to just make simple passes that work every single time. He's a very effective skating puck protection player, and so far with Boston College this year in the NCAA, he has 25 points, 4 goals, 21 assists in 32 games. Overall, having a fantastic collegiate career so far, and I think could be a pretty decent part of that Ducks core going forward. So, in the end, for a player they probably weren't going to re-sign, getting a potential top 4D and a second round pick in a great draft isn't a bad haul whatsoever. But again, for the Avs, it also still works because of their going for it mode. And also having that salary retention is huge for them, so the Avs can get even more players at the deadline this year. Now looking ahead to the trade deadline and this next week, I'm really excited to see what these two teams will do. With the Anaheim Ducks again, it feels like this domino in Josh Manson is the first to fall, but likely the first of many. It feels like with Hampus
Hampus Lindholm specifically, he will be one of the biggest defensemen dealt, and he could be another big-time guy that the Ducks just aren't able to re-sign for the future and end up getting some major assets for. With the Ducks specifically, it's a kind of weird situation since they've overachieved this year. They're obviously playing still more in the retooling route, which I think is smart for them. They know that they're not going to be this serious playoff contender yet, but they're still building to the future. They're maximizing the cap space they will have in the future, and I think that's a pretty under-the-radar thing with this Ducks team going forward, is the amount of just pure value they are accruing in their prospect pool and within the franchise entirely. And with the Avs, I'm not really sure they'll be done yet. We could see them add maybe a couple more depth players. They might not have the cap space now for a guy like Claude Drew, unless they put Gabriel Lanskog in LTAR or something, but at the same time, this Avs team still has the firepower to be able to get there, and if they add a couple more depth pieces, like a Manson potentially, then the Avs will be just fine. But this is a pretty big domino for both teams, honestly, and we could see a lot more from especially the Ducks in the next week. So stay tuned because this is really the first one to go down in hopefully a long list of trades. And if I had to pick any team to actually win this trade, I would still say the Colorado Avalanche just with what they could do in this year's playoffs, but I still think the Ducks get off pretty well here, and I think both teams should be happy with this deal. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this trade breakdown. If you did enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Comment down below what your guys' thoughts are on this deal. Who do you think wins this one as well, the Avalanche or the Ducks? Let me know all your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe. Share this video out with your friends, anybody you guys know online, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.